we are going to show who's the best. This is a big event. Who's the best champion? Super Bowl for me. And who's going to be Sugar Ray Robinson's successor? This is a fight that all fight fans should watch because you really got two. Execution is in the ring. Really? Tito Trinidad. Excitement, excitement, excitement. I can hardly wait. Fantastical. Ooh, I feel good all over. <laughs> I like to thank Trinidad for not ducking out of the tournament and showing and showing and showing that he's a great champion by fighting another great champion. Right now, I'm the WBA champion. And I'm sure that at the end, I will have the three world titles. Countdown to Trinidad versus Hopkins for the undisputed middleweight world championship. On September 15th, Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins will face off for the opportunity to become the first undisputed middleweight champion since marvelous Marvin Hagler held the title 15 years ago. Felix Tito Trinidad, undefeated at 40-0 with 33 knockouts. He has already successfully unified the welterweight and super welterweight divisions. One more victory and he steps closer to boxing immortality. Bernard the Executioner Hopkins at 39-2-1 with 28 knockouts. He has 13 middleweight title defenses, 9 by knockout. One more win and he will tie the legendary Carlos Monzon for the most middleweight title defenses in boxing history. September 15th will be the defining fight of their careers. For Trinidad, it's an opportunity for him to really stake a claim of being an all-time great. For Bernard Hopkins, he becomes the ultimate working-class boxing hero. Whatever they do from here on in, they're going to be defined by this fight. If Felix Trinidad loses, as great as he was, his career in a lot of ways is going to be defined by his loss to Bernard Hopkins. If Bernard Hopkins wins, this will basically make him immortal. If he loses, then maybe he's just another so-so middleweight champion. So both fighters have a lot to lose and a lot to gain, and that makes for explosive fireworks, and that makes for the kind of historic event that I think people want to be at. All that that he's doing, he is going to pay. I don't know how I'm going to punish him, but in the ring, he's going to pay. My aim in the world is to seek and destroy. Once I seek, once I seek you and find you, I'm going to destroy you. You have to be aware of his tricks. Fight him face to face to show him that there's no fear. Coming up, a closer look at the historic middleweight world championship series and a profile of each of the fighters. To keep hopes and shopping. Bernard Hopkins, we are the middleweight champions. Well, I am the champion, and they are double this. I unified in 147, I unified in 154, and I will do it again in 160. Earlier this year, at the legendary Madison Square Garden, the Midway World Championship Series was announced. The undefeated Felix Trinidad and three middleweight champions, Bernard Hopkins, Keith Holmes, and William Joffe, put their titles in jeopardy for the opportunity to become the first undisputed middleweight champion in over 15 years. The unification of the middleweight division, which has always been a glamour division after the heavyweight uh, division, is very important at this time when people are looking for uh, champions in a singular sense. You want to have one champion, and people crave that. This tournament has produced two good results for fight fans. One, you're unifying the middleweight championship for the first time in almost 20 years. Uh, but two, because you had so many good champions at middleweight prior to this tournament, you had champions fighting champions. So you literally had the best fighters at 160 pounds, all throwing their titles on the line, putting their reputations and their careers on the line to define and crown one undisputed middleweight champion. And the public is the clear beneficiary of that. 
And this is what makes it what it is, because you got the best fighting the best. You give the people what they want, and they will respond in kind. I look forward to this. That we have the first unified champions is marvelous Marvin Hagler. In the tournament's first elimination round, IBF title holder Bernard Hopkins successfully defended his title against WBC champion Keith Holmes in a 12-round unanimous decision. Hopkins handled Holmes almost like a little boy. Dictated a fight, maybe won 11 of the 12 rounds. Not an exciting fight, mind you. A Bernard Hopkins fight. It was his every second of the way. Keith Holmes uh, knew that he, inside, wasn't going to win this fight. But Keith didn't want to expose himself to be countered or caught in the mix of throwing punches where he was going to get knocked out or get badly beaten. In the second fight of the series, Felix Trinidad stepping up in weight class surprised many with a crushing five-round knockout of WBA champion William Joppy. Trinidad Joppy fight was far more exciting. Several knockdowns, knockout, domination. What we're seeing with Felix Trinidad is that his power has progressed with him, and oddly enough, it seems like his hands have gotten much faster. Now, the two champions, Bernard Hopkins and Felix Trinidad, will face off on September 15th to determine who will become the undisputed middleweight champion. We have watched him over the years, and now he's ready to unify the time against Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Uh, Trinidad is a young fighter, and winning that championship for Bernard Hopkins is not going to be an easy job. Bernard Hopkins, Kilo Trinidad, both of them wanting to fight their fight. The question is, will they be able to? And whosoever can, therein lies the unified middleweight champion of the world. P.S. maybe the best pound for pound fighter in the world today. Great fight. The grand finale of the middleweight world championship series will take place when Trinidad and Hopkins meet in the fabled ring at Madison Square Garden. But we like to call ourselves the capital of all sports and entertainment in the world. And I think we're the perfect setting for this. Tickets are just flying out of the box office. And uh, I think that we're going to be in for an electric night. This venue is perfect for what I consider to be a perfect fight. I win in this tournament at Madison Square Garden. I am going to add another big win, like they have been in the past. Unifying the belt is history, this legacy, and it's good for myself and good for boxing. Because now you are you own that particular piece in history forever. Forever. Next, the story of a troubled youth who turned his life around to become a world champion. And a look at the remarkable career of Puerto Rico's rising superstar. Champion for more than six years. Bernard Hopkins is one of the most dedicated athletes in the sport and a true survivor. His is the remarkable story of a troubled youth who turned his life around to become a boxing hero. This is uh, the Raymond Rose, and this is one of the, or was one of the toughest uh, projects in the city of Philadelphia. You had to learn how to protect yourself um, growing up in this area. We grew up in this house right here. They didn't have none of this new stuff here, but it was on this side here that we uh, grew up at. This is, uh, the, Elementary school I went to when I was uh, from kindergarten to sixth grade. It was a kind of atmosphere where, you know, you, you really didn't get a chance to learn because there was so much other stuff happening. And the teachers was trying, but they was just as paranoid and scared uh, as some of the students. It was in the schoolyard of this elementary school that Hopkins fought his earliest bouts. A lot of history in the schoolyard. It feel good to be back, especially as a world champion. Although Hopkins showed early promise as a boxer, the lure of the street proved too great. And by the time he was 17, he was arrested and sent away to prison. During the five years Hopkins was incarcerated, he rehabilitated himself and developed the ambition and discipline to become a champion. I had to really realize that I wanted to be what I wanted to, what, what I wanted to be now. That didn't take place until like a year in that situation. 
And once I realized that I didn't want to stay here for my whole life because there's things that can happen in there where that five years can turn to 15 years. After being released at 22, Hopkins never looked back. Nowadays, whether or not a fight is on the horizon, the boxer keeps a rigorous six days a week training schedule. Shortly after turning professional, Hopkins started working with Bowie Fisher as his trainer. And over the years, they developed a close personal bond. Well, Bernard and I, we have a very good relationship. It's more like a father and son uh, relationship, more so than just a fighting and a trainer's relationship. Bernard does just about everything right in boxing. We slept together, we cried together, we ate together, and we rejoiced together, we held the belts together, and now we're going to be holding four belts. That's going to be real great. Under Fisher's guidance, Hopkins won his first middleweight title and has gone on to defend it 13 times, with nine knockouts, beating Marvin Hagler's record. According to Hopkins, his toughest defenses to date were the two fights against Antoine Eccles. I said I've never been hit by Tito. Uh, I will find out, hopefully, uh, when we mix it up. But Eccles right now, as far as I'm concerned, was the hardest punch in the middleweight division that I have fought. Quote, unquote, tough. He's a threat to any top contender or champion. For every fight, Hopkins dons a hood to emulate his nickname, The Execution. When I put the mask on and, and they holler an execution time and we go out in the ring, I'm on stage. You know, this is, this is like, you know what I mean? Now imagine how Madonna feels. You know, this is lights, cameras, action. Once I labeled myself the executioner, I had to go out and perform like an executioner. I mean, it's a mental game with me right now in boxing. Physical part, I've been doing it for years. 99% of this sport is mental. Living up to his nickname, Hopkins defeated Keith Holmes in the first fight of the middleweight world championship series. He took the WBC belt from Holmes and also secured the 13th defense of his IBF title. If Hopkins can now beat Trinidad, he will unify the division and tie Carlos Monzon for the most middleweight title defenses in history. He had 13, 14 straight title defenses. I mean, that's unheard of in any weight division without a guy moving up in weight or moving down. He stayed at his weight class, he dominated his weight class, he defended his title, and he got defenses uh, right after each other. That's what I've been doing. That's what I want to continue to do. As important as title defenses are for this fighter, one thing is for sure, he is clearer about his priorities. So I'm fighting for right here. Family. Security. Need money. Right now, Bernard Hopkins had only one thing in mind, to prepare for the upcoming middleweight championship fight against Felix Tito Trinidad. This fight means the world for Bernard Hopkins. It means everything. It, mean, it, put, it gives him an opportunity to really prove that he is the best middleweight in the world since the great Ray Robinson. Win it. I have to win, and I have to win to the point where there's no doubt in anyone's mind that I didn't win the fight. But winning is the first thing. What comes after that is great. It was one. Felix Tito Trinidad is arguably the hottest boxer in the world today. Already he has fought and beaten the best in three different weight divisions. Now with every passing fight, this young boxer from Coupe Alto, Puerto Rico, makes a strong case to be considered boxing's pound for pound best. You have a very special athlete in Felix Trinidad. When you think about it, he is going up in weight class and doing something that even the great Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard didn't do. Uh, they had losses throughout their track as they amassed different championships in multiple weight classes. Even Marvin Hagler, as good as he was, he was only a middleweight throughout his entire career. But to go in multiple weight classes and be as dominant as you are, we could be seeing the best fighter pound for pound of the last 25 years. Felix Tito Trinidad is not only known for the impressive way that he disposes of opponents in the ring, out of the ring, he also has a contagious smile and friendly demeanor that the camera and his fans around the world love. From the words of his promoter, Don King, one shouldn't be fooled by his out of the ring gentlemanly ways. Tito is bad, while Bernard has the reputation of the executioner Cheeto is the executioner. He executes you with a smile. You know what I mean? He be tearing you to pieces, but he's always a gentleman after he has 
laying there on the floor, decapitated, you know, cut apart. He apologizes and say, what a nice guy you are. It was a nice fight. What impresses me most about Felix Trinidad is his ability to mentally prepare himself for a fight. He seems to come into every fight knowing what he's doing, knowing how to win. And he grows with his punching power is becoming more awesome, more devastating, you know what I mean, than it was when he was a welterweight. Trinidad's first fight as a middleweight was against two-time WBA champion William Joppe. In this bout, the second of the middleweight championship series, the Puerto Rican powerhouse started his attack early and was relentless throughout the fight. Joppe was knocked down three times before the referee finally stopped the fight in the fifth round. Joppe himself said he's never been hit that hard before. So I can't ask Bernard that yet. You know, because I haven't got that. But I say, how long? Not long. We'll be able to ask him, too. How does he feel about being hit by Tito Trinidad? Tito Trinidad has had a remarkable record. And he's already achieved greatness. But I want him to achieve immortality. To be able to achieve immortality is very big for me and for Puerto Rico. Many years after I retired, the name of Felix Tito Trinidad will be mentioned as one of the greatest boxers and one of the immortals. In beating an array of tough opponents, including three Olympic gold medalists, the newly crowned WBA middleweight champion becomes the seventh fighter in history to win championships at welterweight and middleweight. He now prepares to face IBF and WBC champion Bernard the Executioner Hopkins in the final fight of this great unifying middleweight championship series. I think we're looking at something really special with Felix. I think he is the kind of fighter that likes to fight. He's almost a throwback to the era when guys fought for pride, uh, for the love of the sport. And uh, he has been on a remarkable run in the last three years. And it's almost like he's touched by destiny. And, and it's just fantastic to watch that. And that kind of run you know, it's almost like Bernard Hopkins is standing in the way of destiny. And uh, it's going to be a magnificent fight. You pit the most dominant middleweight in the world against the, arguably the best and most dominant fighter of the last five or six years in all of boxing. It's going to be fought down, dirty, and in the face. There's no such thing as a clean fight. This is going to be one hell of a fight. We're looking forward to a fight that's going to be super sensational, one that I... I'm excited about as a fan. I'm prepared to go 12. I'm prepared to go five. I, I would love to go two. Bernard is right. He's not going through the distance. It's going to be a fight. But it's going to be a fight that I dictate. And that's important. You don't see too many fights like this one. Next Saturday night on TDKO Pay Per View, title holder Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins square off in Madison Square Garden as the middleweight unification tournament concludes. Last spring semifinal matchups featured the top four middleweights in the world. In the series opener last April, Bernard Hopkins faced off against Keith Holmes in a foul-filled battle devoid of any artistry. It's a Bernard Hopkins kind of a fight. Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins arose from that rough and tumble fight with the unanimous decision and then waited to see who would emerge to challenge him for the undisputed title. The answer to that question arrived when Felix Trinidad and William Joppe met in the ring one month later. is worth that 160 pounds by dominating Joppy, putting him on the canvas three times. The matchup for middleweight unification was now set. And the championship is by no means all that rides on this upcoming fight. Hopkins has provided additional motivation by throwing to the ground the symbol of Trinidad's heritage, the flag of Puerto Rico, raising stakes for both fighters and assuring a battle we should all remember. So join us next Saturday night, September 15th, BBKO pay-per-view, as we find out who will rise to the challenge and become the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. 
So the battle lines are drawn for next Saturday night in Madison Square Garden. And joining us now to talk about their upcoming battle, Bernard Hopkins from the Prince Ranch, where he's been training in Las Vegas, and Felix Tito Trinidad from the Marriott Hotel in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Bernard, I'll start with you. The cap says war and your wildly confrontational behavior at news conferences both in New York and Puerto Rico has Puerto Rican fans wanting to go to war against you. Did you do the things you were doing to call attention to the fight or to get under the skin of your opponent? Neither. I, I made a, a statement that I felt that I was being disrespected even to today. I felt that I was being disrespected not only through Felix Trinidad, father, but through the Spanish community once we began our uh, fight tour. And I reacted the way that I felt that needed to be reacted. It wasn't wildly, as far as I un understand, it was justifiable and um, it wasn't to get under his skin. But if it did get under his skin, then so be it. He'll take care of it September 15th, I hope. Tito, uh, what Bernard did, particularly grabbing the Puerto Rican flag, has your fans very angry. What has been its effect on you and your preparation for the fight? What Bernard did was neither favorable for me or to the Puerto Rican fans. It is very disrespectful. He shouldn't have done that. But on September 15th, him and I are going to be alone in the ring, and we will take care of that. Tito, two of Bernard's recent opponents, Antoine Eccles uh, and Keith Holmes, accused him of fouling them to disrupt their rhythm and to distract them in the fight. Do you expect him to do that to you? I am prepared to do whatever it takes. I know what, what he's done, but he's not going to be able to, to do it to me. On the 15th, I will be prepared for what, whatever he brings, and we are going to take care of business in the ring. Bernard, let's you and I talk about fouling. When the momentum in the Vargas fight seemed to be turning against Felix Trinidad, he hit Fernando Vargas directly on the cup. If you're getting the better of him, do you expect him to foul you? I'm expecting him to do anything to survive. I'm expecting him to do what a drowning man would do. If he found out he's drowning, he would try to pull the other man down to drown with him. I'm going to make sure that I keep that at a minimum. It's the third man that's important in this fight, and that's the referee. One thing I won't do, I won't complain, not only to Trinidad, but I won't complain to the referee. If he wanted to take it into an alley, we can take it into the alley. That's the unique thing about Bernard Hopkins. He can fight all the types of topics, and we can start in the alley if he chooses to. Bernard, fight fans see Tito's performances against David Reed, against Fernando Vargas, against William Joppe, and they see a devastating, overpowering puncher. Do you agree? Well, I haven't been in it yet to, to disagree or agree with it, but I can tell you also that who's saying that he's the greatest puncher in that division in the last 10, 15 years? Why not these guys could have weak chins? Who said that David Reed got the best of chins? Who said that Fernando Vargas has the best of chins? But in saying that, I will let you know September 15th whether he can hit or cannot hit because I'm looking to hit him just as hard as he hit the, the other guys that he had fought. So right now, I can't even answer whether he can hit or not. I question the guys that he hit on the chin. I question more of what they have to bring to the table than what he had to bring to the table. Felix, is there something about Bernard Hopkins which makes him vastly different from Reed, Vargas, and Joppe? Or is this another fight in which your weapons will be too devastating for the opponent? What Bernard Hopkins does, I am prepared for. I am going to show him what Tito Trinidad can do. And on the 15th, I am prepared to do battle. And if he wants to fight dirty and all, all the other stuff, I am prepared, willing, and able. So, Tito, what kind of a fight will fans expect to see? The fans can expect a great fight, a real tough fight, but only one winner, and that's going to be Tito Trinidad. Bernard, what kind of a fight do you expect? Well, I think the fans and myself is going to expect a fight that's going to be challenging, and I think it's going to be the, the will of wills. I think that when fans realize that Bernard Hopkins is not only the smarter man, but he's the best man at night, and they're just going to have to suck it up and deal with it and move on. 
but they're going to see the technical fight. They're going to see something that they've never seen in Hopkins because he never had that quality opponent to prove his gifts. But they will see it come September 15th, and they will see me expose a fighter that's being called great to make him look ordinary. All right, our thanks now to the two middleweight titleists who will unify the championship of that division next Saturday night, Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins. Thank you both very much. You'll see them again live next Saturday night from Madison Square Garden on TVKO. For the middleweight championship battle between Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins, and you see the difference in age. Trinidad, the younger, by eight years. Hopkins with a two-inch height advantage Rare, if ever, the situations where Trinidad has gone into the ring and faced a taller man. Three-inch reach advantage, however, for Tito. And they both weighed in well under the 160-pound limit after having spent two and a half weeks at or near the weight limit, a highly unusual experience for fighters. Here are the punch stat numbers. The profile of how active these fighters are. Throw roughly the same amount of punches. Trinidad with his pinpoint power, as you can see, slightly more accurate. In, ter in terms of power punches, both of their numbers are very similar. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Felix Trinidad, Bernard Hopkins fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. If a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and they cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Harold. And now Bernard Hopkins prepares to enter the ring wearing garb entirely different from his usual black executioner's outfit. Uh, that symbolism regarded by Bernard and the people around him as not entirely appropriate tonight. And he is expecting to be booed, Jim. And his answer is, I come from Philadelphia where they boo Santa Claus. Once again, turning a negative into a positive. America the Beautiful by Ray Charles. Hopkins chosen entry music. Two men who enter the ring behind him carrying a fireman's helmet and a policeman's cap.
September 9th. He never left. Esto es dedicado a todos los hermanos por esta que pura cepa, representando a un bandera con orgullo. ¡Chico! for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Madison Square Garden, it is time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, white, and blue trunks, hailing from and representing Coupe Alto, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 158 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 40 wins, no losses, 33 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the five-time world champion in three weight divisions, the current WBA middleweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome El Gran Campeón Puerto Riqueño, introducing Felix Tico Trinidad. opponent across the ring on my right fighting out of the blue corner wearing red trunks with silver trim fighting out of Philadelphia Pennsylvania he weighed in at a trim and ready 157 pounds his record stands at 39 wins two losses one draw with 28 wins coming by way of knockout Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making the 14th defense of his title. Here is the WBC and IBF middleweight champion of the world, introducing uh, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Once again, a referee in charge, Steve Smoger, now to give instructions. Gentlemen, we're giving you instructions at the way in both in English and Spanish. Please obey my commands. Protect yourself at all times. Respect the bell. Touch gloves. Touch them up. Respect. Respect. Touch them, Bernard. Let's go. Let's go. The fight to survive and thrive have always made New York a fight town now more than ever. Bernard Hopkins and Felix Trinidad personify that spirit. 
Bernard Hopkins claims he wants to test Trinidad's chin in the first round. Trinidad's father says his son is going to knock Hopkins out in the first round. Sometimes all that is just talk. Sometimes it means real fireworks from the opening bell. Trinidad knocked Joppy down in the first. He knocked Vargas down twice in the first. Trinidad can't be waiting with this boxer. He's got to get off. Bernard Hopkins' job is to stay close, make this guy discouraged, make him look to the referee and start complaining early because that referee's speech didn't impress me at all. Hard right hand over the top by Hopkins, partially blocked by Trinidad, but serious enough to make him move back into the corner. Overwhelmingly in favor of Trinidad as they demonstrated in pre-fight pageantry. Trinidad likes to have room when he punch, throws his punches. It's up to Hopkins to stay close, as close as he can. Hopkins prizes his skills as an infighter. Many experts expect that Hopkins at some point will try to get up into Trinidad's chest and take away his punching range. And he hasn't done that yet. The old saying is, Oscar De La Hoya moved, I'm going to move. But yet, that's not the way to fight Trinidad because you lose energy as the rounds go on. As De La Hoya learned. They trade jabs through much of round one. Biggest blows so far, a Hopkins right hand over the top. Trinidad like to stay paused with his, on the ball of his right foot and, and just throw that three with that right hand. You always compare him to a sprinter, the way he gets up on that front foot. He's on the mark, and Hopkins' job is to keep him off the mark. Trinidad lands a left hook as Hopkins backs away from their first test-to-test clinch. -test Hopkins tries to go inside again, working to try to get at Trinidad's body. try lead right hands. Hawkins just cannot figure yet how to get close. Now he's got it. He's got to keep it just like that. That's the fight he won. Holding with the left hand upstairs as he hit with the right hand downstairs. Smoker hasn't yet been a part of the action. He's the third man in the ring, the referee. Bernard Hopkins want to keep hugging and pushing this guy. Keep this a wrestling match in his favor. A right hand inside by Bernard. Hopkins again lands a right. Trinidad misses his. Hopkins lands his own. Round one is a bit of a scuffle. Hopkins got a little of what he wanted and landed two right hands. And showed that he's not going to be walking into that left hook if he can help it. I need you to jab, okay? I need you to jab, all right? Jab for me, baby. You jab. Stay out of the corner. The fight shows in the center of the ring, and I want you to jab. Pop that jab. We worked on it, so let's pop it. Pop it and get the jab right. Hold your head up a little bit. All right. The same thing you did in the first okay. round. Let's continue that. Everyone calm, you know, to be tranquil. No, no, he, no, hey, he, no, no, he can't no, beat no, me. No, I got him. I mean, Are you okay, Natito? You gotta move, Tito. You got the jab. Make sure the jab is first. Well, it wasn't a first round knockout. Plan B. It wasn't even a highly artistic first round. By CompuBox numbers, it was a missed punch fest. Trinidad was 4 out of 27. Hopkins was 6 out of 43, according to CompuBox. Harold Letterman scored the round for Tito Trinidad. Hopkins is being real small. He jabs, yet he understands that he has thought of a reach advantage with the height there. And he's out of the way once he does that jab. And moving primarily to his left, you trying, want to trying to get away from the deadly left. Of Trinidad. You really want to make Trinidad throw a lot of left because he prefers to hit you with that right, then throw that left hook. George
Which is it fair to guess that Hopkins either wants to be way outside or way inside? Yeah, he just hasn't figured out this guy yet. Trying to get relaxed in there. That's, that's the hard job to move around. He's not comfortable moving, I can tell you that. Trinidad needs room, and that, that's benefits Trinidad when the fight is at long range. So again, they trade from long range in round two. Neither fighter really into an offensive rhythm yet. Trinidad threw a limited number of punches for him in round one. Now he lands a right hand across the top. Trinidad trying to close the range down and step in on Hopkins. He's trying to close the range, but yet he want to keep some distance so that long right hand can come. So he doesn't want to completely close it. He's looking to get right on the mark. Hopkins sticks the jab to the move. So fun. This is unusual that Hopkins would give Trinidad this kind of respect in the first couple of rounds. Very surprised. Watch your hands. That's what you don't want to do with you this. You thought that here. Hopkins would gamble more against Trinidad early? Just jump right on him. You're not. He said he wasn't afraid. Talking to talk. Now you got to jump on him. Hopkins beginning to unveil his jab and sticking it accurately for the moment. Once he tastes any of Trinidad's power, then you're really going to see the motorboat move. can see that Trinidad only want to land a hard shot, nothing else. And that's a dangerous position to be in when you're in the ring with a guy. Knowing that he's intense. Hard right hand by Hopkins. Biggest blow in the fight. Trinidad momentarily stopped. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, bow, bow. How do you feel, Tito? Muy bien, no te daño. He didn't hurt you, did he? Pero, pero no te descuide. But don't, don't, don't get careless now. Don't get careless now at the moment. You guys go that way. Make sure you, you're going to put it. You know, 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 Found him in range. The punch was a little high. Trinidad might have been momentarily stunned, but took the punch well. Compu box numbers in round two. Hopkins 10 out of 40. Trinidad 2 out of 19. So Felix Trinidad in two rounds has thrown by Compu box numbers only 46 punches. Hopkins throwing twice as many, not landing all that much, but the one big right hand. What's the biggest blow of the fight? You don't want to get a kid like that mad. Once you hit him once, get back on him and do something. Tito's father asking him some, his son to work the jab. Work the jab. He tries to get started with it here. Firing the left hand again. That is on the mark. What do you mean by that, George? He's on the ball of that right foot. When you see him up on the on the on his right foot like that, he was on the mark getting ready to deliver like a track runner or something. Take off. So uh -huh. Gotta keep him off that position. You gotta keep him out of that position. And how? How do you keep him out of that position? By, by moving to his left. So he always have to pick that foot up and set it down. Now he's off. Hopkins says he'll be watching his feet as much as his hands just for that reason. Hopkins varying the pace just a little, leading with the left hook there instead of the jab. Now Trinidad fires his own right hand across the top and gets the top of Hopkins' head. He allowed Trinidad to get set that time and he, get, and he paid for it. <laughs> the range is closing up a little. Trinidad moving closer. 
And Tito beginning to loosen up the throw a few more punches than was the case in the first couple of rounds. Hopkins back is starting to touch the ring, the ropes a lot more. That's what you don't want. Letting your back touch the rope. Turn it out. So you think Hopkins wants to stay in the middle of the ring and box with Tito? Yeah, he can box and he can, he's always successful in the box, but you don't want your back touching those ropes. Hands up. You don't need the whole ring to box. Just the middle of it. That's a fight that Hopkins won. Push and hit. You may notice that there's some printing on the back of Bernard Hopkins who rented it out for about a hundred thousand dollars to a dot com gambling service and then bet the hundred thousand dollars on himself to win the fight. Either way, the way the tattoo's huh? Yeah, either way, the, the tattoo's already fading as the sweat pours off of Hopkins' body here in round three. But Bernard Hopkins isn't fading. No, and the bet looks pretty good, at least for the moment, as he gives Trinidad a spirit to fight. Bernard Hopkins is dictating the tempo, and he's making Trinidad think about coming more to him. Hopkins sticks the jab right on the point of Trinidad's chin as round three comes to a close. Okay, how do you feel? Deep breath, deep breath. With your hands up, you got to keep your hands up. It, it's going to be easy now. It's only a matter of time before you get him. You're going to have to get him there. Not the hard side, this is a quick shot inside. You get him out of there. Bernard Hopkins showing that a Philadelphia fighter can box as well as brawl whatever his reputation is. Round four begins. Harold Putman Hodge just scored the first three. Look at Jim. I got a two to one. 29 28. Bernard Hopkins. Jim, the first round, that's what Tito Trinidad did. What well, happens good? And Bernard would take a step to the right and rush in. Tito put him on the way out. But rounds two and three. It's that Hopkins left Jim boxing from the outside. The occasional straight right hand. Landing a clean of shots. Out boxing. Now Trinidad has Hopkins moving in on him. That's what you want. You want. Hopkins get that brave to try to follow this hard in Trinidad. Trinidad opens up, lands two power shots. Hopkins tries to fire back immediately. Trinidad misses with the right. Hopkins lands his own. Back seat on up. Fires to the left hook. Trinidad getting as good as he finishes out. Now lands the short right hand inside. Power against power. Which man is stronger? Range. This is not a good idea for Hopkins to mix it up with Trinidad. He's done an excellent job of using his brain. Don't go back to Philadelphia too soon. Well, perhaps he's realized so far that he can deal with Trinidad's punch. No, oh, that punch can't be dealt with, Larry. You gotta stay smart. You must stay smart. No punch, no punch, no punch. He looks Trinidad only through 67 punches in the first three rounds of the fight by CompuBox numbers. That's a very limited offensive output. He has begun to fire here in round four, but Hopkins is firing back and lands a right hand to the body there. Clean jabs by Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins said that this fight would be his defining moment. So far, he's had pockets of brilliance and seems to be getting Trinidad for the most part to fight his fight. But there have been moments here in round four when Dito seemed to be turning the tide. Hopkins intending to move like this is a good idea. He did weigh in on 157. It can happen. As Trinidad sized Hopkins up in the corner, Hopkins landed three punches in a row. Then Felix went to the body as Bernard moved away. Bernard, once again, is spending too much time on the ropes. So 
So far, Hopkins has completely neutralized the left hand of Trinidad. Can Trinidad find a way to put him on the defensive without that left hand? The right hand fails there. Look at him out at him. Don't let him out jab you. He wants to jab because he don't want to do the jab. He don't like that jab. He jab with me. All right? A quick shot. Don't worry about the big shot. I want to see the quick shot. All right? He's not going to hit you. You got to take it easy. Don't, don't get killers now. That was the fifth round and now we're calm. Thank you. You got to keep your hands up. Yeah, you got to keep your hands up. So you can get him. Okay, real close, real close, real tight. Bernard Hopkins, trainer, Louis Fisher, is not nearly as well known as Felix Trinidad Sr. But Fisher is a 73-year-old proven pro who knows every trick in the book and has done a brilliant job of training Hopkins throughout his career. He told him to try to jab with Trinidad. That's not a good idea. Don't jab with him. You catch him off balance and then jab him because he turns that jab into a hook once you start trying to step in with power. Trinidad does. He will wait until he's finished and then get him. Hopkins blocking Trinidad's jab with his right glove. Bernard continually moving to his left to stay away from Trinidad's left, and he steps in and banks his right hand against the side of Trinidad's head. Hopkins misses the right, Trinidad misses the left. Hopkins fires a little left hook inside. Hopkins has done a good job of staying over there, making Trinidad throw those left hooks. That's where you want to be because he's a bit more accurate with his right hands, Trinidad is. Make him miss with left hook. Don't try to make him miss with the right hands. Hopkins a little bit quicker with his jab. Now Trinidad corners him. Tries to step in, Bernard steps away. Solid left by Trinidad. Trinidad seeming to take a little velocity off the left to try to land it. Hopkins is not making mistakes that Bernard, uh, that uh, Joffrey did by letting Trinidad lay on his left hand. He holds him. Certainly not making the mistake that both Doppy and Vargas made of uh, standing in front of Trinidad. He hasn't done much of that.
you, make sure you come back with something else. You got to, you do it strong for him. You got him already. He, he hit you and he can't do nothing to you. Where's the professor that you put right in? Put it at the shoulder and it's not the head. Put it at the shoulder. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Trinidad in close quarters. The bell rings. Trinidad throws a left hook. And as Bernard Hopkins says, he's not going to ask the referee to change things. He'll take it into his own hands. When Oscar Deloya came out and appeared to many eyes at ringside to win the first seven rounds against Felix Trinidad, None of the three judges sitting at ringside scored it exactly that way. Right now, there's the chance that in the eyes of many here, Bernard Hopkins has won the first five rounds against Trinidad. Will the judges once again insist on giving rounds to Trinidad when he doesn't seem to be winning any of them? That's what happened against De Loya. This is the kind of champ Trinidad that you're going to knock him out, knock him out to win. You may as well forget trying to win this game or point. If you want the title that he possesses, you gotta knock him out. So you're saying that Bernard shouldn't fool himself into believing that he's succeeding just because he seems to be winning the round. No, you can't coach yourself to a victory with a champion like this. The judges are not gonna allow you to do it. And I think this pace is a little too much for Bernard up. He's used too much of his leg early on. Well, certainly Trinidad hasn't overused his. He's only thrown 23 punches per round, which is a very low punch output by copy the box numbers. Now Trinidad lands a big right hand against the ropes, but Hopkins steps away and lands in return. Remember Trinidad's amazing stamina. Hopkins lands a right, Trinidad lands a left. Felix is a marathon runner who builds the tempo from round to round, and he's trying to build it with the left hook right here. Full straight left hand by Trinidad. Hopkins blocked almost every one of those punches. And there's no sign yet that Hopkins is bearing down. Oh, he has done a lot of signs. But Two men is out. Hopkins with two left hands, quick little left hands. That was a clean, hard shot, which Trinidad seemed to take well. Trinidad aggressive, perhaps a little frustrated at the end. You're not going to find this kind of determination all often in a fight as you see in Phoenix Trinidad. Why don't you want to give Hopkins more credit, George? He's fighting a terrific fight so far. He's doing a great job. But this determination of this guy keeps coming back 
it just takes everything out of your legs, takes everything out of your heart. Well, it's, they're both champions. Between rounds, Felix Trinidad asked his father in the corner, am I winning the fight? And Trinidad Sr. said, yes, you are. Harold Levin, how have you scored it through six? I'll get you four rounds to two, 58, 56, Bernard Hopkins. I never in my wildest dreams thought that I'd ever see Bernard Hopkins win his fight with an outside game, but that's what he's doing. Staying outside, popping the jab, coming back with the straight right hands. In that round six, I just thought Felix Trinidad was a little bit the aggressor, got into better shots. I've given him Trinidad rounds one and six, all the rest to Hopkins. Hopkins trying to load up with that quick right hand. Everything is trying to execute what his trainer told him to do, throw the quick right hand. And Trinidad catches you in that exchange, his top trouble time. More and more, George, Trinidad is able to land his left hook. Why? Hopkins is giving him the left hook because if he's able to land one jab and stay as a closer, he's always able to get the left hook off. I'm going to worry about the left hook if I'm... Uh, don't pause, don't Hopkins, pause. I worry about that right hand. Four punches in combination by Hopkins there, finishing up to the body. And at that, stalking relentlessly, imposing mental pressure on Hopkins as he does on all of his opponents. Even when technically outgunned, Felix Trinidad is always coming. Always coming. Good thing about Hopkins is he's not allowing Trinidad to get up on that right foot, making him keep it flat. That's what you want. If he's going to hit you, let him be out of position to do it good. Ooh, thank you. Chopping right hand by Hopkins. The second one partially blocked. Crowd ooing and eyeing as Hopkins continues to score. Setting the expectations of many. That's not like a Philadelphia fighter at all. Thank you. <laughs> George, you did a lot of great boxing out of Philadelphia. And you couldn't survive the famous gym wars in Philadelphia if you couldn't box. Yeah, this guy's boxing tonight. Oscar De La Hoya exposed the vulnerability of Trinidad. And Bernard Hopkins is trying to use that model to dominate the fight. Yes, particularly Trinidad's vulnerability to feints and movement. Hopkins said to me, I'm no Del Oya, but I saw that Felix fell for every feint against Oscar, so I'll be using them too. He posed the lean on him, son. As long as you keep that jab going in your home, you're going to be home free. All right, you cannot out jab you. On my head. Okay, let, let's see. If, if you get up there, you can throw some punches so we can get him. Now you gotta work with him real good. Let's see if we can punch up and down. You gotta throw punches. One hand, one hand. When you get him, you, when you get him, the fight will be over. He's not gonna be able to take your punches. But you gotta know that your hands have to be up. Keep your hands up. Three judges. One from the United States, one from Thailand, one from South Africa. Maybe the verdict falls into their hands, although Felix Trinidad certainly will want to try to put Hopkins on his back. In round seven, by copy box numbers, Hopkins landed 18 punches to only six for Trinidad. If you go by copy box numbers, Hopkins has outlanded Tito in every round. You know, there are a lot of people out there who never heard of Bart Bernard Hopkins. He hasn't had a lot of big television fights. We're hearing about him and seeing him now. You're seeing the hunger of a 36-year-old man who's waited a long time for this moment. A geriatric wonder. Tito gets him against the ropes. I'd like to see what happened in the 10, 11, and 12 with the geriatrics. He's now starting to land some hard, chopping punches. Tito, but Tito is taking them well. And he didn't go undefeated and have 20 championship fights by not being able to take punches well. 
And Art is trying to make Trinidad walk into his traps now. He's setting traps. You can go back eight years in this sport and you won't find a fight in which either man was declared a loser. And it's abundantly clear now that neither man came here tonight expecting to lose. Hopkins believes. Whether Trinidad will be able to beat the belief out of him remains to be seen. But right now Bernard is showing a multiplicity of skills as he continues to outbox Tito. I don't believe what I'm seeing. I don't believe it. And now Trinidad shuffles his own feet to try to dazzle Bernard. And Bernard says, you shuffle a while, I'll hit you. Trinidad is playing into Hopkins' hand now with the foolishness. His job was always, he's been always the pure business fighter. Another man has gone to the body as much as he might. Maybe the critical difference will come in the next few rounds if one man decides to focus on the ribcage. They're both terrific body punches. I think the body punches have gone out of the window now. Tito ripping with both hands, trying to break Bernard down with power shots. Hopkins countering back twice with the left hook. Punch, punch. Stop, 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 stop. All night Trinidad has been trying to lay on Hopkins' left hand, but Hopkins seems to get his left hand right out of the trap and hold Trinidad. If he's able to just lay on that left hand of Hopkins once, he's going to get him with that overhand no, right. No, 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 no. Hopkins lands a nice right hand just after the bell as Smoker shouts, no, 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 no. And here's a graphic that demonstrates the degree to which Hopkins has dominated CompuBox punch stat numbers outlanding Tito Trinidad in every one of the eight rounds so far. Remember, the judges do not see these graphics. Walk the arms. When would I get wet? Fight and smoke. Get that for me. All right, all right. Separate the champions from the legend. The two, three of them quick shots inside this other sport. Getting deep now. Get him out of there. Okay. How are we doing? I want to know how we doing. Sometimes it takes a long time to be young. Bernard Hopkins at 36 still seems young fighting one of the great fighters of recent times. Age has got nothing to do with it tonight. All about the best fighter who can, who can take it. Harold Letterman gave Tito Trinidad the first round, I think generously. Now, even on Letterman's card, you're reaching the stage where Trinidad would need a knockout to win if Hopkins can stand up the rest of the way. Trinidad has tried to get in those left uppercuts. He's tried. And that's where he can ring home if he can just get him in. The biggest thing Hopkins has accomplished by my lights is he's just refusing to bend to Tito's grill. He's still making Tito it's fight his fight. Okay. All of that determination, Hopkins has not been one out. Maybe he should have. You know, fellas, remember what Mark Antonio Barrera did against Prince Ahmed? Everybody talked about him. Walking into big punches, he came out and put on a masterful show of controlled aggression. We're seeing that Bernard Hopkins is not a one-dimensional fighter by a lot. That's the big surprise of the night. He's been able to keep, stay on his legs whenever he needed them. He was able to move out of the way. Another big surprise is that it is so far a clean fight without a single penalized foul. A shot. The closest to came was Trinidad elbowing Hopkins beyond the rope. Bowie Fisher tells Bernard Hopkins if he keeps firing the jab, he can't lose the fight. He's still firing the jab energetically. There's Trinidad able to lay on Hopkins' left hand now. That's what he's been trying to do all night. Overhand right on top of it. He's here, go punch. Trinidad got in a good shot on Hopkins' neck. Bernard lands a straight right hand up the pipe, and that gives him room to move off the ropes. And for the first time in the fight, is grinning at Tito Trinidad.
Trinidad. He was able to hit him with the right hand and move out of the way. And there's another big right hand. And again, he moves out of the way. Very smart. Didn't say, I heard you. I'm going to get you some more. Hit you and get out of the way. And another right hand for Hopkins. This is a cold, clinical, totally professional performance by a true professional prize fighter, Bernard Hopkins. When you got him throwing, make sure you use that jab and then the right hand. You got to throw more punches. Don't let him push you. If he starts pushing, you push him back. And if he comes close to you, work with him. No rest, baby. No rest. Legendary stand. Here we see, straight right hand, but but Hopkins is not loading up on these right hands. He's throwing short, quick punches and getting out of the way of the return. Like I said, cold and clinical. He is not allowing himself to get into the heat of Trinidad's passion. He's boxing, moving, and winning. And that's hard to do when you hurt a guy and don't go after the finish. This man is being extremely smart tonight. Hopkins. Once again between rounds, Tito Trinidad asked his father if he's winning, and once again, Trinidad Sr. said, yes, you are. I, I, think, I think Trinidad is asking that question because he doesn't really think he's winning. No, I think he wore the most discouraged look I've ever seen on his face between rounds. Harold, how do you have it going into the tap? Look at Jim. Seven rounds to two, 88-83. Bernard Hopkins. You know what? I can't understand this. Bernard Hopkins and Felix Trinidad standing face to face. Bernard Hopkins gets hooked first every time he lays the jab at a straight right. I think Felix would come in on an angle, but he just stays right in front of him. Bernard gets off first and hurts him all the time. When a guy is as good a puncher as Trinidad, he depends on that. He expects that somewhere along the way, it will pay the difference. And if it doesn't, what are his answers against Bernard Hopkins? Trinidad got the left hand on. He's leaning on the Hopkins left hand now. That's what he wants. Hopkins better be careful. That's it. Puts his weight on your left hand and throws his overhand right. Oh, Hopkins beating him to the punch, though. You know, George, Trinidad has landed some big shots, but he hasn't hurt Hopkins. After the Duffy fight, there seemed to be no question about Trinidad's viability as a 160-pound fighter, a middleweight. But maybe the question reopens itself as the result of the way that Hopkins has been able to take Trinidad's punches tonight. Oh, it's not all about that. Hopkins has been extremely smart tonight. Extremely smart. Trinidad is spending a lot of himself right here because he's been taking punishment. We're seeing That's the part he won of a real champion in Trinidad because he's conscious of serious fire. This is the determination of Felix Trinidad. Trinidad is going to have to take some chances. And if he's going to manage by the determination of Bernard Hopkins, what an awesome show. What a great, great fight as we come down the stretch in the 10th round. Blood coming out of Trinidad's nose. Bernard Hopkins won't take no for an answer. Steve Smoker trying to pull Hopkins' trunks up. Clock still running. Trinidad running out of time.
Última, última assalto, última. You got a box him. Let the coming up. The end of the round, Bernard Hopkins patience during that fight resulted in that round but you heard the question in Trinidad's corner can you fight another round and that was the ring doctor who wanted to know if Trinidad could continue so the doctors are watching Trinidad now as Hopkins comes off a big 10th round where he landed 33 of 86 punches they go into the 11th Hopkins has been beyond 10 rounds 14 times in his career Trinidad 8 Hopkins with a prohibited lead on Harold Letterman's scorecard as we come to the last two rounds. It was a push. A lot of punches, but it was a push. Trinidad is very timid right now. Hopkins senses that Trinidad is weakening. Very weak. Got to be careful with him. He's still that powerful puncher. Good uppercut by Hopkins. Trinidad visibly tiring for the moment. Bernard Hopkins bet $100,000 on himself to win the fight. Because he doesn't want to lose that $100,000. disappoint you. Big right hand. Yeah, I'm just okay. one of those, Larry. He's, this guy has been a fox and a terror. Bernard no, Hopkins. No, 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 Trinidad is hurt. Everything we would not expect. He's been dead and more. Everything. Trinidad is hurt from the accumulation of punishment as round 11 comes to a close. You gotta use that jab when you come in. Now he's gonna come after you now. So you. He's in my back. Get his back. Get my back. Get my back. With the water, boy. You on? You got it all, baby. It's in the computer. My cup, box numbers. What Tito Trinidad with only 14 punches in the 11th round. He looked like a fighter with very little left in the tank. Now let's see what he's got for what might be. The last ditch block, round of his block. career. Harold, how do you have it coming to the 12th? Our kitchen, 108, 101, nine rounds to two, Bernard Hopkins. I only gave Tito Trinidad round one and six. All the rest of Bernard Hopkins boxing beautifully from the outside. Get out, get out. Hopkins better go for safety and get a knockout. You just can't trust judges. Well, Hopkins.
Duncan still wants to fight. He's not sitting on his lead. He's seen somebody try to do that against Trinidad without success. Hopkins imposing his will and his skill on the man who is tonight the lesser fighter. Trinidad continues to come. He'll never quit. No, no never retreat. stop coming. No retreat. has put himself up there in the list of all the great middleweights. His 14th consecutive defense of his title. Trinidad, a beaten man. He was beaten boxing, and then he was beaten physically. He was beaten with the smarts of Bernard Hopkins. He was beaten with the heart of Bernard Hopkins. What a performance. I'd like to find my words so I could eat them. <laughs> oh, what brilliance. Oh, what brilliance. Here's a guy who tonight, just as he has through his whole career, did it his way. He insisted on his individuality, his right to govern his career and his life on his own terms. It cost him a lot. He got it all back tonight. Well, you know, that was a lot of inspiration in New York City for the United States flag. And he bit into the inspiration. There's your winner. There's your winner in a big way. And a Felix Tito Trinidad, who had never before been so physically beaten up in his career, never before knocked out, goes down in the middle of the 12th round and cannot continue. As Bernard Hopkins punctuates a huge and thrilling and unexpected victory with a sensational power shot show in the 12th round. Oh, what a right hand, George. What a right hand. Every shot. This guy was so, I never thought his legs could last. But I guess those 150 pounds, exactly what he needed to move around. He 157 pounds, three pounds under the limit. Some people he thought, oh, no, he'll all. be too weak. He wasn't too weak. He was too strong. He for tricked us all. He tricked us. A thoroughly dominant performance from start to finish. Hopkins by CompuBox numbers, landing more punches than Trinidad in every single round of the fight. Hopkins never did anything dirty to the referee, had not a chance to disqualify him. No, it was a great, great fight all the way through. Never did anything dirty. I'm, and what I'm a really show of determination and will by Felix Trinidad. Thoroughly beaten throughout most of the fight. But fighting like a winner who believed in himself, he never stopped trying. He never stopped trying. A champion to the end. Scorecards show that Hopkins was headed for the easy victory. On the American scorecard of Don Ackerman, he was up 109 to 100 going to the 12th. On Stan de Cristodulo, South Africa's scorecard, he was up 107 to 102. And on Anak Pontonkam's card, the scorer from Thailand, he was up 107 to 102. So Hopkins had won the fight on the scorecards as they entered the 12th, just as we expected was the case. Without any trust of the judges, he went for the knockout. Now let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to announce the official particulars on Hopkins' triumph. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 18 seconds in round number 12. Our referee in charge, Steve Smoger, recognizes the corner and stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout tonight, earning his place in boxing history as he is now the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner. Final 
CompuBox numbers. And increasingly throughout the fight, it became a CompuBox landslide for Hopkins. Landing 131 more punches, throwing 324 more punches. Landing at a higher connect percentage to the shock and surprise of many. Landing the bigger power shots, winning big and going away. Final power punch numbers, Hopkins landing 68 more, throwing 165 more, dominating increasingly down the stretch again. What can you say about one of the most shockingly brilliant performances we've seen in the ring in recent years? And Larry Merck can stand by now with the winner. Thank you very much, Jim. Bernard Hopkins is telling people, I'm not great yet, but I will be. At 36, he still thinks he has time to get better. Bernard, why were you able to master a fighter who was considered so devastating? Well, first, Larry, I'd like to thank HBO. All the people I'd like to thank my advisor and my friend um, and my friend Lou DiBella uh, for giving me the opportunity not to take the bad uh, rap that was on Bernard Hopkins. I'd like to thank you for being not biased but being truthful and everybody at HBO. Larry, I'd like to first, you know, hope that the troops and things work out okay with America. USA is strong. We will knock anybody out that try to go against us. Larry, I train hard for this fight. Um, you know, I always have a good soundbite to give everyone. I'm not a dog guy. But I wanted to I wanted to show my greatness and I, and I believe I came halfway doing that. Was was there a little misdirection in you indicating that you were just going to try to dive into him and smother him when you knew all along that you felt that you could show the skills to outbox him that people didn't think you had? Yes, Larry. One thing I knew, and I mentioned it all through the media, I said, once Trinidad find out he can't hurt me, the fight's over. You know, Larry, I got one of the Philadelphia chins, iron chins, but I just happen to have skills with it. But I, I knew, Larry, that if I take my time, set my shots up, as long as the fight come, the more pain that I was going to put on Trinidad. i just like to thank HBO for giving me the opportunity. I'd just thank you for saying the good things about me when, how, I, do good, when I do good. How, I ain't going to let you talk. How, how are you able to avoid his potent left hand? Well, Larry, you take the best weapon from the guy that they're using against you. If the guy has a gun, you try to get you get to the gun. You don't run from it because you got a better chance on smothering or you got a better chance on uh, getting to the gun. I had to take his left hand away from him and smother his shots and keep my defense up. I'm not known for my good defense, but I do have a good defense as well as an offense. Trinidad is a left hook guy. That's all he had, and I've been watching him for years. Once I took his left hook away, and every time he set up, I watched his leg and his feet, and I knew to move to the opposite way. All right, let's take a look at the last round at the knockout. Now, you knew he was weakening from several rounds before this, right? Yes. I knew right about the fourth round when I knew I hit him with a good counter right hook, and he sort of dazed, and he said, oh, and I wanted to follow up but not follow up recklessly because I know he's, you know, he got a piece of dish in the left hook, but he never hurt me, Larry. I mean it. He never hurt me. No, no, shape, no shape for him in this fight. All right, so in the last couple of rounds, you were fighting with more abandon and, and then the control you were fighting in before. Yes, I was uh, doing just that. Larry, you know, I don't know what you're going to do after this fight, this, this, you know, interview stuff, but you ought to be a, a, a trainer in the corner because, you know, you got the blueprint on Bernard Hopkins and you, you, you read it well. Exactly. Just what you said is what I was doing. God bless the fire department. God bless the fire department in the Philadelphia, uh, you know, the police, Philadelphia all around the world, you know. What Larry, it, they are the Warriors. I'm serious. What does it mean to you now to have in Philadelphia tied Carlos Monzon's middleweight record of 14 consecutive defenses? It's great, Larry. It's history. But I want to be judged by my peers, not by me reading my own articles. I think when it's all done, Bernard Hopkins will be known as one of the greatest middleweights that came along at all times. I don't want to say that. I want the world and the public to judge me, and I can live with whatever they come up with. But in my heart, in my heart, I knew that I would get another chance in life to redeem myself from what I used to be and to where I am now. I can show example not only for, for boxing, but for people in general. Larry, I am the American dream. I am the American story. Thank you very much, Bernard. Congratulations Larry, again. as always, you're looking younger, not older. <laughs> so do you. Jim. You know, I said to Bernard Hopkins last week, do you find it at all ironic that a guy who spent seven and a half years in a state penitentiary feels like exhibiting patriotism as you do at this time and he said hey in any other country in the world I wouldn't have gotten 
the second chance. Yeah, you pay your dues and you come back out, and that, that's an inspiration to everyone who's been in jail. Come on out. Who cares about your past? We want to know what you're going to do today. It's about craft, George. It's about craft, it and we saw a craftsman at work tonight. I've seen, he, he, and I told you, I was trying to find my words so I could eat them. I said he would lose. Yum, yummy, yummy. Hey, <laughs> listen, bad. I mean, here's how underappreciated he's been. Some of the smartest boxing fans I know called me this week to ask, does this guy really have a chance against Trinidad? <laughs> I said, guys, he hasn't lost a fight in eight years, you know. No fighter like that doesn't have a chance as great as Trinidad is. Yeah, he, he tricked us all. Time. He tricked us all. And he taught us a lesson. Never give up on a guy who's had some experience, some skills, punching power, and Philadelphia gyms. Don't give up on him. What can Tito learn from the way Hopkins took away his left hand? I don't think there's a lot for him to learn. He lost. He hasn't lost before. He can come back and be better. There's not a whole lot to learn. You just you lose, you win some, and you lose some. Just pick yourself up and let's start a new career. I'm sure that's what he's going to say to Larry Merchant right now. Papa, Papa, Trinidad. Great fighters fight each other. Trinidad, I thank you. One for you getting this tournament. I wouldn't have got a chance to show my greatness. But anytime, hold up, I'm not just saying this ain't politics. I run my own show, I'm my own manager. Whenever you need a chance to redeem yourself, I gotta get the millions, we can do it. I'm not a guy that duck people. All right, that's on records. Y'all hear that, reporters? Great show, Trinidad. I will come back to San Juan. Listen, me and Lou DeBell Entertainment, Don King will come back to San Juan, and I'm a man. I will apologize to the Puerto Rican fans for throwing the flag down for my heart, because that's a true champion. We set it up within a month, and I'll be there. Okay. Is that is that good? Tito. 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 I hope y'all accept it. Tito. 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 He says he would go to Puerto Rico and ask for, uh, to, to be forgiven for what he did. Uh, I would love for him to do that. Thank you very much. Tito, were you surprised or shocked at how well Bernhard Hopkins was able to box? ¿Te sorprendió o te asombró lo bueno que él pudo boxear? Sí, yo sé que Bernhard, yo siempre lo he dicho, que él es un gran peleador, un hombre que tiene mucha defensa. No sé si se recuerdan esas, esas son mis palabras. Y demostró en la noche de hoy que es un gran campeón. Este, yo vine a ganar, pero me ganó. Eso, yo lo acepto. I've always said uh, Bernard Hopkins was a great fighter and a good boxer. I came to win. He beat me tonight. I accept it. All right, tell us, Tito, before the fight, they made you rewrap your hands in a different way with only one layer of gauze and tape instead of two layers of tape. Did that affect your power? Antes de la pelea te hicieron que te vendara las manos otra vez so, con solamente una línea de, de para trapo. Eh, ¿Eso te afectó el poder tuyo? No, no, yo soy, yo soy siempre un, yo soy siempre un gran, gran pegador. No importa, sinceramente no importa la manera que me venden, si mi padre me va a vender con todo el corazón. I'm, I'm, I'm a great puncher. It doesn't matter how my hands were bandaged. Uh, it was just, that's the way it went. Did you realize toward the end of the fight that you needed a knockout to win? Estaba tú pendiente, realizaba tú que necesitabas un knockout al final de la pelea para ganar? Es posible. De verdad que la pelea, yo pienso que la pelea estaba bien pareja. Voy repito, Bernal es un gran peleador. Eh, me, dio, me dio buenos golpes, yo también, también le di buenos golpes a él. Fue inteligente y de verdad que, como quiera, hay que aceptarlo porque me la me ganó. Y es un, un gran peleador, yo lo he dicho. It was possible that I might have needed a knockout, but I thought that the fight was very close and that uh, I could still win uh, without having to knock him out. When you went down at the end, how surprising was that? for you having never ever lost a professional prize fight. Cuando tú te caíste a lo último, ¿cuánto te sorprendió eso en, en saber que nunca esto tú había perdido una pelea profesional? Sí, es verdad. Yo nunca me ca había caído más de una sola vez. Eh, estoy sinceramente estaba bien consciente de que me había tumbado nuevamente y estaba tratando de recuperarme lo antes posible. Pero el hábito de tu combate, de verdad que yo, yo acepto lo que hizo el hábito. No, no, no hay problema.
I, I went down, and but I, I wasn't hurt. I was conscious of what was what was going on. He hit me hard, but the, and I accept what the, that the referee stopped the fight. All right, now now that a Roy Jones fight is out of the picture, will you try for a rematch with De La Hoya? Ahora que la pelea de Roy Jones no parece que se va a dar, trataría tú por una revancha con De La Hoya? Yo siempre he dicho y siempre hemos dicho que vamos a analizar mi mi futuro. Yo de volver a pelear eso lo tengo que discutir yo mi padre y yo. Yo soy un gran peleador, no me importa que haya perdido, yo me repongo y voy a ganar y ganar y ganar, no, no importa. Pero en la noche de hoy pues tú me pides derrota, no, no hay problema. I'm a fighter and I'll fight anybody. Uh, I'm, I'm a great champion and uh, I have to discuss it with my dad and see what goes on. Thank you very much. You've been a champion. Thank you for putting up the best fight you could against a great fighter tonight. Y quiero decirle que siempre he respetado de gran manera a HBO, a, a toda la gente del boxeo. I, I want to let, let everybody know that I have always respected HBO and everybody in boxing. Y espero que a, tanto a mí como a todos los boxeadores siempre lo respeten porque el boxeo es un deporte eh, duro. Boxing is a very hard sport and it, it, I'm, uh, I want respect and I wish that all fighters uh, were respected also. Y como yo sé, y como yo sé que ellos también me respetan a mí. And, and I know that the HBO respects me. Que lo sigan haciendo. And, and I would love that they would keep doing it. Y que en, en el futuro sigan, sigan habiendo grandes peleadores y... Y grandes campeones. And then in the future there would be Peleando great great fighters and, and uh, great fights. Peleando por HBO. Fighting on HBO. Okay. No me wanna. Thank you very much. Okay. Muchas gracias. Thank you, champ.